So what we've done, our process... Claire is 37 weeks and five days pregnant with her second baby. She is currently in labour with an effective epidural in situ, but has made slow progress and has received an oxytocin infusion to induce labour. The fetal heart is being monitored continuously via electronic fetal monitoring. Her membranes have ruptured and clear Lycor noted. Claire's midwife, Georgina, has asked a colleague to join her in the birthing room to complete a routine review, fresh eyes, for the fetal heart rate as she has some concerns. Claire, do you remember before we did a fresh eyes, I've just asked somebody to come in. Yeah. Oh, Joe, oh, she's hi. here already. Hi. Hi, Joe. Um, hi. We're just going to do a fresh eyes, have a look at the CTG, have a talk about you, yeah, and then um, we'll talk again afterwards, Thank okay? You. So, Claire is currently on the CTG and on oxytocin infusion. She's been on there for two hours. So, this is her second baby. She had normal delivery last time. Um, however, we've had slow progress in this labour, so we commence oxytocin to see if we can speed things up. Lycor is clear, no other issues um, that we've got that we know about at the moment. Have you filled out your I form? I have already done my form. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Let me have a look at the CTG, Brilliant. all right? Thank you. I think that we have stable baseline appropriate for gestational age. Variability has been reduced, but for half an hour, not, not 50 minutes yet, no decelerations. I think we have um, amber compensating CTG. I'm not sure I'd agree with you, Joe. Um, I, I wasn't really sure about the baseline. I didn't think I could really um, say it was a stable baseline, so I would have gone with red decompensated. Right, so we don't agree. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's maybe try to look at escalation policy. Okay, I think we have to call the registrar and then they can come in and do a review with us. And right. let me drop in charge now Absolutely. as well. Okay, I will see who is around. Okay. Everything's fine. Um, Joe and I are not quite sure. We don't really agree on the and how we classify the CTG. Okay. So what we've done, our process is to go and get somebody else to come and have a look at it with us okay. so that we can make a plan together with you. So I'm not really worried. I just would like to get a second opinion. Okay, that okay. Yeah, I think that sounds fine. Hi, guys. Hello, I'm Nadia. I'm one of the obstetric doctors. Hi, um, I've just heard all about you and I've been called in just to have a look at your CTG um, because the midwives weren't sure on how to interpret it. Yeah. Um, would that be okay if I just have a quick look and then, and then we'll chat? Okay, so if I um, take a new uh, CTG sticker yeah. um, and, and the other midwife was telling me that it's the baseline that you're concerned about. Yeah, I just can't see the baseline stability. Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Um, I do think that the baseline is... is definable here and appropriate for gestation and now that the variability is improved um, I'd say it's more than five and there are no repetitive decelerations so I I think I would classify this as green or no fetal hypoxia um, but what do you think do I you just think I agree the variability has improved mm. I'm absolutely happy with that I just can't quite see how the, d the baseline's being defined and that yeah. it's stable so okay. I've still got concerns Okay, that's fine. Should we have a look at the escalation policy yeah. and just see what we do next? So, okay, so um, we're here. So, yeah, shall I speak to the consultant on call yeah, and see what she okay? thinks? Yeah, of course, it's absolutely Brilliant. fine. Yeah. Um, so, Claire, yeah. the CTG is a bit of a tricky one to interpret. Mm. Um, and we're just trying to decide whether it's normal or whether there's something concerning there. Um, so, what if it's okay, I might just go and speak to the consultant who's on call in charge of the unit today and just ask her to come and have a look yeah. and chat to you about what the options are. Okay. Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you bear with me a few minutes? Yeah, of yeah. course. A couple of minutes is fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. All right. Thanks. No problem. Thanks. That's okay. Um, Ms. Agarwell, there's a CTG that um, we're trying to assess, but we're having difficulty reaching agreement on it. Would you mind coming and giving us an opinion? Yeah, absolutely. Those Thank CTGs you. where we're not quite reaching agreement or are difficult to interpret, in my experience, those are the ones that lead to poorer outcomes. Yeah. Shall we go and see the patient together and we'll look at the CTG together and do a full clinical assessment of the whole clinical picture and we can see where we go from there? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Thank you. No problem. My name is Ms Agrawan, one of the consultants with the obstetrics and gynaecology team. Um, I've heard there's been some conversations about the well-being of your baby, so we're just going to talk about you a little bit. Okay. By all means, get involved in that conversation. But we do have time, so do not worry. Thank you. Brilliant. Tell me what's been going on. Okay, so have you had an S-bar? Would you like me to give you one now? Why don't we go with a fresh S-bar? Okay, perfect. So Claire um, came into um, labelled uh, quite a while ago now. So this is her second baby. 
she had a normal birth last time, no issues there. This time it seems to have been a bit of slow progress, so we commenced oxytocin map two and a half hours ago. No other risk factors other than the slow progress, epidural's working well, Lycor is clear. She's 37 plus five, so no issues with gestation. Um, I think that's about it for now. Okay, fab. Why don't you show me where your concerns are? So I couldn't really, uh, with, with the, my colleagues couldn't see, I couldn't see where the baseline stability was. So okay. I had trouble working out where the baseline was. And so that's why I was concerned. Okay. Well, I can see why you were worried uh, when you when you called and you had your fresh eyes, but yeah. it does seem to it look like things have petered out a little bit. So I think our baseline's sitting um, at about 140, which is appropriate for the gestation. Yeah. Um, the variability appears to be uh, good between 5 and 25. You've got the odd acceleration. You've got a little bit of cycling. And I can't see repetitive D cells. So there's the odd one here and there. Yeah. And her contractions seem to be okay, you said? Yeah, so I palpated. They were 3 in 10 and moderate strong um, and a good resting tone in between. Okay, fantastic. So if we look at this um, CTG together, now that we've got a bit, bit of a clearer picture with regards to that uh, yeah. baseline, I think we're sitting that uh, along the greens without any fetal hypoxia because we're appropriate for gestation um, and everything else, as we've said. I will explain that to you. Yeah. Do not worry. Would it be okay if I examined your tummy and then did an in intimate examination? Yeah, that's Is that fine. Right? Brilliant. Have you had any issues with intimate examinations in the past? No, no, it's all been okay so far. Fine. And your epidural's been working well? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Would you mind we, while I'm doing that, you don't need to start, sit here watching me. So why don't you go and see what's okay. happening in yeah. room four okay. and um, I'll examine. And then what I'll do is we'll come back out and talk about what decision we've made. So okay. we're all on the same page. No problem. Okay. Brilliant. Sounds good. Fantastic. Yeah. I performed a structured clinical assessment and I agree that the CTG was harder to interpret earlier but it seems to have sorted itself out so the fetus okay. is looking happy yeah. but having said that um, the progress isn't what we would hope or expect and, and we've not made much progress on oxytocin either so I'm going to offer her a, a cat to cesarean section. Um, are we all happy with that plan or would anyone like me to escalate to a more senior consultant? No, no we're happy. happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, brilliant. Um, in which case, I'll go in and start consenting for the caesarean section. Would you mind documenting in the notes to say that we've had this multidisciplinary discussion? Yes. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, if, yeah. if we're not in theatre by about 30 minutes, um, then we'll do another fresh eyes just Absolutely. to confirm that baby's still happy. Is that okay? Absolutely. Fabulous, team. So we've had a little chat outside amongst ourselves. And between us as a group, I think we're much happier that baby's looking well. Oh. But Good. so we've we've got, like I said, that luxury of time. But um, you remember when I was here examining, mm. we haven't quite made the progress we'd expect someone who's had a baby before to have made. And baby's still quite high, not in an ideal position. Mm. Um, and it means that your cervix is still quite closed. So I think on the on the basis of the slow progress, we've got a couple of options for you. The first being, I think we may need to think about a caesarean section, and I've briefly discussed with you the risks and benefits of that. Yeah. Um, but the alternative, is, there is the option now that we have a better idea that baby's well, is that we um, wait and watch, pop you back on the drip to help those contractions come on and um, see how progress continues. Mm. Um, but like we said, we'll be continuously monitoring baby. What's your feeling, given that we've had that discussion earlier? Where's your headspace at? I think we've kind of had a chat, yeah. and I think it was really helpful going through those pros and cons mm -hmm. of, of caesarean sections and carrying on earlier. Um, but this isn't how my first labour was, and um, I think I want to listen to my body. Um, so I, I think a caesarean section seems like the right thing to do for us now. Yeah, and, and you know you. You can, you can feel this is quite different and, yeah. and not quite what we're expecting. So hopefully we'll find out what's going on there. Um, were there any particular elements of your birth plan? Obviously, this is not the birth you're planning. So are there any particular elements of your birth plan you're really keen to hold on to? Um, I think just um, for things to be as calm as possible, I'd be really keen to still have delayed cord clamping and some skin to skin immediately with the baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and that's the nice thing. While we're doing it, while your CTG is looking okay and your, your baby's looking happy, we have got a bit 
of leeway to be able to do things like that. So I'm more than happy to offer immediate skin to skin. So as baby's being born, we'll drop the drapes and pop baby straight onto your chest. Um, and um, as long as, again, you're not bleeding and baby's well, we'll also do delayed cord clamping as, mm -hmm. as long as baby allows. Yeah. Um, so although it's an emergency, it's not an emergency where baby needs to be taken away from you or anything like that. Yeah, I think yeah. that sounds good. Is that all right? Yeah. I'll just go get the paperwork then. I've got little, something for you to sign and then we'll get moving. So she'd like to go ahead with the cesarean section, so I'm going to take the consent form in and get her to start signing that. Would you mind informing theatres and letting them know that we want to, this baby delivered with, within 30 to 45 minutes? Yep. And Would you mind prepping her Absolutely. for theatre? And give us a heads up if we've exceeded that time so you can just do that yep, second no fresh eyes. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you everyone for your input into what was a challenging case and escalating appropriately. Did anyone want to have a debrief off either once we come out of theatre or at the end of the shift? Anyone particularly want something? No, I think no. Okay, fine. Um, it's it's it'd be a really good case, interesting one for the CTG meeting. And yeah. uh, would you like me to send the details to the fetal monitoring meeting? That's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and if anyone does want to come and and have a chat to me at the end of the shift, um, just one to one, by all means, just come and say hello. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. No Bye. It's essential to be able to have a culture and an environment where everybody feels they have a voice. If there are disagreements, that we can actually challenge that. The relationships in the team are incredibly important and you can really see this in the video. They clearly have a really good relationship as a team and are able to have really open and honest conversations with each other without feeling judged. I'm not sure I'd agree with you Jo. Um, I, I wasn't really sure about the baseline. I didn't think I could really um, say it was a stable baseline so I would have gone with red decompensated. Right, so we don't agree. No. <laughs> they feel like they can question each other's um, assessment or with the same um, desire, with the same vision um, that they want to do the best for the, the family um, and they want to understand what's going on with the CTG and they want to make the best decision they possibly can. You need to escalate and use the process that's available in your unit but it usually entails ensuring that you go through um, your registrar initially and if you still are not resolved then you may well um, need to go up to a consultant level. I'm going to offer us a, a CAT2 caesarean section. Uh, are we all happy with that plan or would anyone like me to escalate to a more senior consultant? No, no we are happy. happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a midwife perspective and there are things that as a doctor I may not pick up but my midwifery colleagues will pick up more and um, as a doctor I would be picking up on things and also involving the patient because the patient might have other concerns as well, which, you know, from just the notes, we may not be able to identify. What's your feeling, given that we've had that discussion earlier? Where's your headspace at? When you are caring for a woman, it's really key to make sure that you have your reviews in the room with the families and that you're not doing that outside of the room. Separate to if there is a disagreement, you might need to step out. But while you're doing all of your reviews, it should be in person and you should be fully involved in care. Not using jargon um, and using language that people understand, um, inclusive language that people understand. And also going back and checking that, that they do understand what's going on. Um, asking opinions, involving and shared decision making. Um, and making sure that the they understand the processes that we are following as well. Thank you everyone for your input into what was a challenging case and escalating appropriately. Did anyone want to have a debrief off either once we come out of theatre or at the end of the shift? When we've had a difficult case um, within maternity and particularly relating to CTGs, we, um, we need to check in with all of the staff to make sure that they feel comfortable with everything that's happened. We do that quite often by offering a debrief. It's important from firstly learning that, you know, we've learned something from that. Um, it's also important that um, everybody is sort of um, happy in sense that, you know, they, they still don't have queries. And making sure that everybody's given the time to share their thoughts and go through a process. Sometimes that might need to be a one-to-one -one as well. So there's different ways that you can approach that. It's really important in a debrief to have psychological safety and ensure that everybody gets a 
chance to voice whatever their concerns might be or that they just need to talk through a process. The video is a really good example of, of how it absolutely should happen, how we all imagine it's going to happen. In practice, there are, there are possibly challenges that we would come up against. Um, if there's poor relationships, if the if the hierarchy um, is not able to flex, is not able to change its gradient from being very um, steep to absolutely telling you how it is, it needs to flatten so you can have a conversation between you as a team. Uh, and they demonstrated that really, really well. To sum up, it's vital that people can voice their disagreement while working. When disagreement arises, it must be escalated appropriately depending on the processes within their trust. All decisions should be shared, including with the woman in labour, and everyone should be in agreement. A debrief should be offered after difficult cases to ensure that everyone is happy and no one has any further queries or concerns.